Greetings and welcome to this episode of Let's Create Something with Trapcode Tao. Today we're gonna create this kind of a seamlessly looping waving hexagon pattern. And in order to do that, we're gonna use Trapcode Tao in After Effects. So let's go in After Effects and let's start by creating a new composition. So Control N and let's make it the standard HD dimension. So 1920 by 1080 and let's make the duration something like 720 frames to give us a little room in the timeline. Let's hit Control Y to create a new solid and let's call this solid Tau. Hit OK. Let's uh, look up for our beloved Tau effect in the uh, effects and preset panel here and let's apply it on our solid. By default we have this ring. Let's start by going under the uh, shader section there and uh, let's select wireframe so one of the first thing we're gonna do is uh, set that in the segment section set the segment mode to uh, repeat and guns and uh, in this one we're gonna use hexagons so six sides now let's just make a line out of that. So let's get right into the path generator and uh, instead of a circle, let's choose line. As we're starting to make out our several hexagons here, let's select something like uh, 20 segments and uh, let's change the line point there. So let's use the default value there from the X axis from line point one and let's go at the end of the value here and type minus uh, let's say 2000 and let's go in line point two and let's go at the end of the value there and type plus uh, 2000 the same value so we're gonna get a straight line with our segments there and it's gonna go uh, all the way on the outside of our area of composition there next um, Let's change their orientation by going in the rotate X in the segment section. So let's type 90 degrees and let's make them very thin. So uh, we're going to change the size there and let's set that to zero or maybe just one. And let's uncheck the chamfer. And we can also lose the caps if we don't want those lines to appear there. So now we have uh, our plain and simple hexagon shapes lining up on our line. Um, next we can just shut off the ambient occlusion because we won't need it for the kind of look we're going after. We're going to set the shader to density and the no normal effect down to zero. So we have uh, pretty straightforward as wide as they can uh, straight lines and uh, maybe set the line size to 3.33 like that or then again maybe just two depending on your taste and let's add uh, the amount of segments until they touch so right around 33 there so now we have our first line of hexagons let's repeat that by going in the repeat path section there and let's open up the first repeater and uh, we're gonna leave the symmetry doubler checked there and we're gonna start with one repetition so we don't want to uh, repeat it on the x-axis so we'll set that to zero and it will increase the value on the y so let's go right about there at 100 and let's also change it on the x there so let's go something around 87 there and uh, we can add a little bit more there. I meant to say uh, 150 for the Y and then maybe something around it Looks kind of close So let's verify if 86 is not the, be the best value there and now we are starting to build our Sort of a hive pattern there with plenty of hexagon so as long as we have those numbers there with the size at 100, we can reduce the size there. We'll have uh, our hexagonal segments here displayed in such a fashion. Now it's kind of a plane, so we can add some fractal displacement on that to add some sort of waviness to it. So um, 
let's see let's create a camera by going control alt shift c and uh, let's make it a 50 millimeters camera the default value and let's hit ok let's create a null control alt shift y and uh, let's make it 3d we'll simply use that as a dolly for our camera now we can change the angle so let's change it uh, for 45 degrees on the Z there so we have it displayed diagonally like that and uh, let's use the C key to uh, cycle between the camera tools and let's select the camera rotate and uh, let's rotate that to get some sort of a display like this and we can add more repetitions to fill up the screen so let's get right back in the f repeaters and let's add up 12 repetition there and now we can use our camera to move around in there uh, let's get down to the fractal displacement and uh, if we increase that it's gonna make it like uh, we just want to affect the Z axis so let's get down to the individual amplitude and frequency settings there and when we're gonna set the amplitude X and amplitude Y to zero so now as we increase the amplitude it's gonna only affect uh, the Z axis and let's uh, maybe reduce the oct scale there or the frequency until we have more these kind of uh, wavy patterns and now we're ready to simply animate the evolution or the offset X to have it flow uh, so let's hit on the stopwatch at frame 0 for the offset X and let's get maybe uh, 90 frames later in the timeline and uh, let's set that to uh, something around I don't know 2000 maybe 2120 let's open up our seamless loop little section here it's a little helper there the only thing we have to think about here is to click the set end frame button here and it'll populate the right value in the loop X property so if we go at frame 0 let's make a marker here by hitting shift 1 and let's go to frame 90 also make a marker shift 3 so now we can roll back and they are the same so if we ramp review in between they are going to wave and it's going to loop seamlessly it's as easy as that so since we have rotated our camera 45 degrees, it's what makes it wave in this direction. Uh, let's also make them offset their position while they're waving. So it's going to give us a little bit more interesting of an effect. So first, let's shut down the amplitude just to understand what we're doing here. And in order to do that, we're going to simply use the offset here and uh, we're going to uncheck the size and we're going to use the offset position so now we have 33 segments so the little math here we can do so let's say, set a first keyframe here on frame 0 and let's go to frame 3 I mean to frame 90 but by hitting on the 3 key on the keyboard because we made a marker so uh, now let's do a little math here so um, let's see let's type down 100 divided by so front slash uh, our amount of si segment minus one so in in our case here 32 and let's hit okay so it's gonna give us this value here 3.125 and that's our second keyframe here so what it, this is going to do is uh, make it uh, offset and loop so now we can set the amplitude value back to something around 125 and now it's gonna have this motion while it's going and we can say we want it to go the, on the other side we can simply type down the negative value here so now it's gonna go from this to this and if it's not enough maybe we can increase this value here so let's always keep it a multiplier of this value so we can multiply that let's say three times so hit the star key here so this value times three, it's going to make it move 
three times faster this way. Pretty neat. So as always, just a little reminder here, we can use the uh, evolution, the unkeyframed evolution property here if we want to uh, use it as a random seed generator for our fractal pattern here. So now we have a completely different pattern. And uh, maybe we can half down the frequency here on the on one of those to get our waves more uh, definite in one direction. I'll start something like that. Play around with those. Maybe we can add a little bit of amplitude of uh, the x and y axis. See what it gives. All right, so that's pretty much a basic setup I wanted to uh, talk about today. Uh, this is only the wireframe version of it. It's pretty simple. Uh, but remember that we can always make this instantly look uh, different kinds. Let's, let's, do it. let's do it now just for the sake of it. So maybe instead of having the wireframe, let's set this back to fill. And uh, the density, let's set that to flat. And what do we have now? Let's set our caps back on. And there we have our whole pattern here. We can reduce the size of them and uh, add back some depth to them. So now we have our nice little pattern here, but with more uh, 3D geometry instead of having simple, uh, simple wireframe. And uh, this, of course, we can always add some uh, HDRI image-based lighting from the pre-built environment there. And uh, look at the caps there. They're all divided there. Maybe we can go here on the tessellate and set that to quads. And also, uh, can we actually do that? Let's get to the shader, set that to smooth. And now we have our pieces, and they're kind of uh, reflecting what's going on in our HDRI. And let's uh, set the amb ambient occlusion back on, and uh, maybe reduce the, the scale a bit, so 0 0.4 to 5 maybe. And let's increase the intensity a little bit. And let's get a little bit of a uh, beveled edge on those by going back to the chamfer here and uh, oh no it's not going to to do it like I I hope it, it it's, it's gonna just add it lat laterally maybe it's just a little bit chamfer there and uh, we still have an unused repeater so we can maybe just do something like uh, repeat it not on the Y but on, on the Z and uh, reduce the scale so uh, let's say segment size X, Y and Z let's set those to 80, 80, 80 and 80 so now we have uh, another hexagon on top of the other hexagon for no particular reason and if we crank up the repeater it's going to make us uh, some kind of little towers like that and let's, let's shut off the chamfer. So uh, maybe we can tone down the. And let's try another one of those HDRIs. So instead of the sunset fill, let's try the dark industrial maybe let's have no no reflection at all only only the diffusion if we can change the direction of the light source here by rotating our whole uh, 360 environment and on top of that we can add our own light source so let's uh, check this second Tau Lumi light here checkbox and let's create a new light control alt shift L and let's call it Tau Lumi all caps 
and let's make it a point light and let's hit OK. So now we can set the Z to zero. We're starting from there and we have a light that we can control here in our environment. And there we have our randomly uh, waving and looping hexagon geometry background. So that's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed this uh, little fun experimental session here. Thank you for watching and as always, see you next time.